In this video, we're going to look at the WebGL Liquid Distortion extension. It's an extension that allows you to create these type of interactive image-based backgrounds. So here we have a section I'm going to be working with in order to add the extension. I'm going to go to the design tab of the section under element type pro category backgrounds. We will assign the extension as a background type. In terms of the settings that we have, uh, we obviously have the image, which is the image that we are going to be using as a background. Uh, let's choose this one. The next setting that we have is style. And this is the style of the WebGL effects in question. And it goes from style one to style six. And the difference is the, whether there is or not, or the amount of color blending that happens when you move the mouse and by how much the pixels get shifted in whatever direction you're moving the mouse in. So with style one, as you can see, there is a bit of shifting, but almost no color blending. Uh, if I'm in this area here, where most of the pixels have the same color or very similar colors, since Sci1 doesn't apply any color blending, we basically, even if I move the mouse, uh, it's pretty much invisible. You don't see the effects in here. So this is something you should keep in mind, is that the composition of your images in terms of colors and the style that you're using will dictate the end result that you get in any specific area of your images. So if I choose something like style six, then when I move the mouse here, we can still see some of the black that comes from here or here, and it jumps all the way here when moving the mouse. And if we do something like, uh, let's say style three, we don't see any of the black jumping from here because the color mixing is lowered, but we can still see some shifting happening. And uh, because these colors here, that are a bit more darker, will be calculated at this level. And as we saw with style one, uh, these colors are too similar in order to be taken into account. So keeping this in mind and uh, try to experiment with different uh, settings based on the images that you're working with. And as I mentioned, any type of image uh, will work. You can have just a single letter, for example, uh, and a bunch of uh, transparency uh, around the letter, or it could be a logo or logo mark or whatever you want it to be. It's basically all pixels. So if we uh, look at here, since this is a transparent area of the image with style one, then nothing is happening with style six. Some of this black will come over here and that transparent area will get filled with a bit of black. So maybe with something like this, uh, style three, one or two would work best. When the mouse is over the black area, it will get distorted. When you're moving in the transparent area, nothing happens. Let's change the image again and move on to the next settings that we have. So this time let's choose something uh, a bit more colorful. So the next setting that we have is size. And as you can see, when I move in the mouse, uh, there is a certain area that gets affected uh, around the mouse cursor. And this invisible area, we can control the size using the size setting. So as you see, with the maximum level of two, this becomes much bigger. And we can, of course, lower it. Uh, and make it much smaller, depending on 
what type of effects we're trying to create and how pronounced or visible we want to make it. Uh, the next setting is slower fade and uh, let's change the image yet again in order to help visualize this setting. Uh, let's see. Let's use this one. So uh, I'm going to put it back on the default. And as you can see, when I move the mouse, the pixels are getting shifted in a certain direction. And after a bit of time, they go back to their original location. And if we want to slow down or increase the amount of time that it takes for the pixels to go back to their original location, we can use the slower fade option. As you can see, it would take a lot longer for the pixels to shift back into their original positions. The next option we have is apply to whole page. And this is as the name suggests, it would apply this background to the whole page for every section that we have. Here we have a couple more sections at the moment. It is not visible. But if we enable this option, then it would be visible and it's still, of course, interactive as well. The last option is disable on touch devices. And this is an option that would disable the extension when the page is shown on touch capable devices. So a couple of things to note, uh, like I said, the image composition in terms of pixel colors is important. Uh, the other thing is uh, the size setting has a maximum level of two, but you can increase it to whatever number you want. And you would essentially be use, uh, affecting a bigger portion of the image with every mouse move. So this may or may not be something that you want to do. But the important thing to note here is it's probably something you don't want to use with every other picture. Uh, in this case, it's okay with this image because most of the colors are relatively the same. And using it with something like with style one or style two, when we don't do any color blending is fine. Uh, using it with uh, some image that has a lot of colors and going above style two may become uh, problematic. Uh, visually, it may not be as pleasing as you might think. Uh, even if you may think it's cool, uh, some people will find it disoriented. So something like this is uh, just way too much. This type of picture, you don't want to use uh, something like size 10 or 5. Actually, even with style 2, it's still yet yeah, OK. Uh, but uh, going beyond that with anything other than style 1 and 2 is uh, just asking for trouble. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I uh, hope you like it, and I will see you in the next one.